This is Varanda Ghat, one of the most picturesque and beautiful locations right in the heart of Maharashtra. But as pretty as it is, it is also treacherous and challenging to drive on. To tame this road, you need a car that won't succumb to its tight hairpins or fast bends. A car that can take on the broken patches and continue charging ahead and a car that can do complete justice to this snake of tarmac that is properly rewarding if you treat it right. And boy did we make the right choice. This everyone is the new Porsche Macan and let's get one thing out of the way immediately. It is a proper Porsche. Yes, it might be the entry to their amazing lineup, but by no means does it feel basic or bare bones or like it doesn't deserve that beautiful golden crest on that clamshell bonnet. It is absolutely fantastic. Now logic and reasoning says save yourself a lot of money and buy, you know, one of the other German mid-size luxury SUVs. Anything like a BMW X3 or the Volvo XC60 or the Audi Q5 the GLC, the recently launched Lexus NX. There is a lot in this sort of shape and size, but nothing feels like the Macan. However, for perspective, for the same sort of money in 2019, you could buy a Macan S and that got a 3-litre V6 engine. This one is a 2-litre four-cylinder turbo petrol unit that makes 265 horsepower. Four-cylinder, which is a bit of a downer. People usually smirk when you say, four-cylinder Porsches, but it is just fantastic. The tuning is superb and that's the thing while driving a Porsche. You know, all these technical sci-fi terms sort of make sense. You know, you talk about body control, you talk about how the chassis is set up, suspension geometry, steering ratio. You usually wouldn't say all these things in a normal car, but with a Porsche, you sort of have to look at them because the whole experience is surrounded by them. You know, the whole car is engineered for that perfect driving prowess and that is what it has it just feels like so much thought has been put into the driving dynamics of this car to make it feel like a proper Porsche the engine is tuned absolutely perfectly it is a bit relaxed low down the rpm but as you gain speed and that needle climbs up it, it just gives you so much punch and poke But if you want more, there is also the Sports Chrono Pack in the options list. Now that basically sharpens up the engine a bit more. The gearbox responses are faster and you have a slightly better 0 to 100 time. But all in all, I think as stock, this thing is just beautiful. You don't have to really do much. You, if you want to get that little bit extra, of course, you can go all out specking this car. But to be honest, <laughs> even as stock, it will keep this smile on. And that exhaust, it's not one of those dull four cylinders out there. It has exhaust valves that in sport pop open. You then get nice pops and bangs as you lift off as well. So it is definitely enjoyable. You do not feel like you're driving a plain Jane boring four cylinder. It has that excitement about it. It has the buzz that you expect. <laughs> and on this stretch, it is superb. And on this road, handling is what truly shines. A lovely fluid steering, beautifully weighted. It has a sense of heft to it, you know, that you really don't get on luxury SUVs. They all want to be light. And you can opt for the Power Steering Plus, which is an optional extra. It costs a few thousand more. And that basically will help it become a bit more light at city speeds. But I don't think you should go for that. Don't waste your money on any of that. There is fantastic grip from the all-wheel drive system and it just grips and grips. It is a rear bias system, but my God, is it good. You also have slightly fatter tires at the back for that extra bit of power that they go through. And overall, it just delivers so much. It gives back so much. And that is the point of a Porsche. You know, it's you don't buy it with a head. It is a lot to do with the heart, a lot of emotion. And that emotion comes when you are on a road like this. It is so good in terms of handling that it is arguably, you know what, forget the arguably, it is the best handling SUV out there right now. 
not the Audi RS Q8, not the Lamborghini Urus and not even the Porsche Cayenne Turbo. Those things are like guiding an elephant through a Sunday market. It's too much. It's all in excess. You can never tap into the full potential of the car. This is absolutely spot on. It is genuinely the Cayman of the SUV world. Now the Varanda Ghat is of course superb in places, but there are some bits that aren't all too perfect. But with the Makan, those aren't a problem either. Cars like this are usually a bit firm. You know, they are performance oriented. They want that nice firm, taut suspension. So the overall ride is a bit on the firmer side. Not on this one though. It is very beautifully balanced. Bumps and potholes, not a problem at all. And that might also have to do a bit with the 19 inch wheels because they have a decent amount of tire profile. Of course, you can opt for 20 or even 21 inches. And obviously that is then a bit of a compromise on the ride. But as is, as stock, this thing is superb in terms of ride quality. It also has an off-road mode. Of course, now that changes the power delivery. You now have a 50-50 power split and it does sort of help on B roads or a slightly broken trails. But it is the sport mode that you will always keep on because I've had this car in sport all this while and why would I not just listen to this? Oh! <laughs> What's even better in sport mode are the gear shifts using the paddle shifters. The seven speed PDK, it is super fast and it is very, very responsive. The gearbox is very well calibrated. The gear ratios are well spread out as well. So you always are in the right gear. And if you choose to shift by these paddles, you know, add a bit more of driver engagement, then it is fantastic as well because it goes into full manual mode and you can then blip it as you want. Have it in the gear of your choice and just flick through and it suddenly becomes a very, very fun day out. This Makan is just fantastic. Absolutely no body roll. This thing just goes flat everywhere. The balance is fantastic. The grip is fantastic. Handling is the absolute highlight. It is a Porsche all out. You know, there's no two ways about it. For people who are saying, oh, it's not a real Porsche. It's basically an Audi underneath. It's not. It's really not. Porsche has also updated the interior of the new Macan, but like with the rest of the car, the basics are very much there. Now inside the new Macan, it is very easy to spot what has been changed because gone is that array of buttons you got on the center console. You now have a nice piano black panel here with haptic buttons and controls. And thankfully they have still retained switches for HVAC, which means you have these nice reassuring clicks, you know, to control your HVAC. The other changes are, of course, like I said, haptic buttons for everything else. So for sport mode, you have this sort of click function. It works really well, but it is absolutely impossible to keep this panel free of smudges and fingerprints. The other change is the screen, which is now 10.9 inches. And while it is crisp and responsive, there isn't much to play around with. Also, the Macan only gets Apple CarPlay, which is a bit of a grief for Android owners and it also misses out on wireless charging and ventilated seats. Now Porsche has modernized the center console and the touchscreen, but what they haven't touched is the instrument cluster and thank God for that because you still have those lovely analog dials. You have that big tachometer in your face. It's fantastic the way the needles bounce up and down and it just gives you a feel of that retro charm. You know, it has that nice Porsche feel. Thank God they didn't go the Taycan way and you know, digitize everything. This thing looks really, really nice. You of course have an MID screen on the right, which is very, very informative. You get a lot of stuff in there. All you need to know is in that MID screen, controls right here. So very, very convenient. It's not, you know, over the top stuff. And like I said, they have focused a lot on the basics, you know, getting the basics right. And that makes a world of a difference. And overall, the dashboard layout is very simple. It's very clean, uncluttered, not a lot that is happening here. It is definitely premium, a lot of soft touch materials and build overall is just stellar. I mean, it has that typical German build quality that is renowned for. Everything feels just well put together. And speaking of the upholstery, this beige and black combination is actually an optional extra. You have to pay a bit more to get this. As standard, the Macan comes in all black 
and that shouldn't really be a problem because it's not like you feel claustrophobic. The cabin is nice and airy. The sense of space again is very good. What does add a bit more spaciousness is the panoramic sunroof, but it comes at a cost. The panoramic sunroof that you see here is a 2.6 lakh rupee option. So yeah, I mean, it is a very important part in luxury SUV. I think it should have been standard. Nevertheless, it is still on the options menu. If you absolutely have to have it, pay that extra bit and have it in your car. In the back, now space is not your best friend in the rear seat. You will be cramped, especially if you're over six feet. It is not the place for you. But then again, the Macan is all about this seat and not that. So those who will be in the back will have to compromise a bit. However, you can only fit two of them in the back because the center tunnel is quite large. You get your own climate control back there, but not the best place to be. I mean, if you buy a Macan, this is the seat you will always find yourself in. So while a lot has changed on the Macan, the design is something that has seen only minor updates. It still has the bulbous curves of a Porsche, but look closer and you will notice the revised bumpers at the front. The Tiger Claw air vents are conjoined now with a body coloured panel and you have a new grille and new LED headlamps as well. The lovely clamshell bonnet remains though. Over to the side, the 19-inch wheels and coupe-like design make it instantly recognisable as a Macan. And if you zoom in, there is also a new 3D pattern on the black panel lowdown. The rear continues to flaunt the long LED light bar and the chunky exhausts, but the highlight remains in the driving. Like I said, it is for that quintessential driving enthusiast. The moment you put logic and sense to it, the price sort of looms on you and that has been the biggest problem with the Macan. And it has refrained many buyers from signing the check. However, if you don't mind the cramped back seat and regard driving prowess over everything else, there are very few SUVs out there that can deliver what the Macan does. And when you get it on a road like this one, you won't regret your decision.